Uh, the Japanese influence was very heavily uh, visible in, again, Cyberpunk 2020 that Mike Pondsmith created. Um, in it, uh, the Japanese were kind of like the considered the upper class of the citizens in, in, in Night City. Uh, Arasaka is considered to be the most actually powerful entity uh, on the planet because in the Cyberpunk universe, governments are still existing, but they don't really have that big of an influence anymore. For instance, the United States they are still united, but they are not having all the states that they currently have, like some split uh, apart from it. So corporations are really the uh, on, on the forefront on uh, shaping how life looks like for the average citizen. Uh, Arasaka is being a very big player in this, uh, having his head their headquarters in, in Night City directly. But it's it's absolutely not the only Japanese co co company out there. Like for instance, Kuroshi Optical Systems, they are providing our optical scanners uh, in, in the game that we actually saw. Well, we all, we always have them. We get them at the beginning of the game, but we actually were seeing an upgrade to them uh, in the last demo last year in the gameplay reveal that is also uh, available for the public. So uh, Japanese technology, uh, well, as in, in real life, it's like uh, top notch. So the cyberpunks are using it very cleverly to their advantage. Absolutely yes, although I don't want to tell too much about it right now because uh, it's a very integral part of the universe and the game and I would love for you guys to find it out by yourselves. Japan still exists, absolutely. They, uh, when it comes to Arasaka they have subsidiaries uh, right over there. Uh, it's, it's, we are mainly focused on Night City because uh, Night City was like the main environment to play back in 2020 and we took it over. It's like the, the environment that the core our cyberpunk fans are, are known, they, that they know. Um, the, the world changed quite a bit. I mean, it's not like some continent disappeared or there, is, there was no big dystopia going around, something like that. The, the world is basically intact, but it got like degraded in all the wrong places and in uh, when it comes to the particular place of Japan, Japan is still around. We haven't considered rising sea levels, uh, which we maybe should. Uh, and uh, there will be a lot of references to, to, to Japan itself for certain as well. The thing with influences is that uh, we are artists, we are storytellers, all of us. We are interested in pop culture, so we all read books, we watch movies, we w play video games, and all of those things are influencing us as our well individual artists uh, and storytellers. So they are indirectly shaping what we're doing with Cyberpunk. There was no um, like short list of gaming titles or movies that we had written up on a wall that we wanted to aspire to. Uh, all but, well, Cyberpunk uh, 2020, obviously, this was on our blackboard several times. Um, when it comes to manga and anime, uh, certainly Akira was mentioned uh, very often. Uh, Blame, for instance, I, I think as well. There is always like somebody mentioning something, hey, we somebody did it like that back there, maybe this could fit in here. We are... Uh, trying to use all the uh, like source power on our in our brains, like in our imagination uh, and memories, in order to come up with like solutions that later on we will sculpt and shape in a way that it will fit into our cyberpunk uh, universe.